Let's get rid of uh, these lines. Okay, so this is the uh, most intimidating thing that you're gonna look at, a completely blank screen. Uh, this is how I would recommend, at least to begin with, until you find your own sort of groove, uh, this is how I would recommend tackling uh, sort of thumbnails. Right, let's go to... Um, I would only use the brushes that uh, we used last week, so these shaddy brushes just here. Uh, and you can do pretty much everything in this compositional thumbnail stage using just this one. So I'm going to make this brush bigger by using the little square bracket tool next to the enter key. Or if you can see, the size of the brush there is changing as I go square brackets left and right. First of all, though, I want to create like a little frame that my picture's going to sit in. So I'm going to go to this marquee selection that lets me draw out a rectangle. And I'm just going to draw something out like that. I'll create a new layer. And I will immediately group that layer by holding Control and G. So this puts that new empty layer inside a little group. It's just for organization going to do each one of these little thumbnail compositions is going to go into its own little separate group. And um, I'm going to create what's called a layer mask on this group. So because I've got this rectangle selected, if I hit the layer mask button, you can't see anything change. But what's happened is it's created this new special little mask on <coughs> the group that's white and black. And I can look at that by holding Alt and clicking onto it. What it means is anything that I paint in this group will only appear where that white rectangle is. Okay, just to prove this. Uh, so I've got a nice big blue kind of color, and as I paint, look, won't let me go outside of it. This is just a way of keeping everything inside a kind of rectangular uh, frame, because you've got to frame your work in some way. It doesn't have to be rectangular landscape. It could be portrait. Last week, it was portrait. Um, so uh, that's what I like to do. Also, I like to just initially darken the background. So with the background selected, you know it's selected because it's highlighted. I like to bring up the levels, which is Control L. And if I just slide this little slider here, you can see I can make it darker and brighter. I want the background to be a bit subdued and darker. And in here, I'm just going to fill it with a slightly brighter value, like that. You don't have to work like this. This is just how I like to work and um, how a bunch of other people kind of like to work. For me, uh, it means I'm not looking at a bright white kind of page, which I find the most intimidating to deal with. I like looking at a bit of a neutral kind of gray, which means I also know that I can make this darker or make it lighter. If I'm working with pure white, I can only ever make it darker. Um, but there are people who do like to work with pure white. Uh, Nick Jindro, he likes to work with pure white. He starts with it, and he literally just paints pure shadows in straight away. I personally can't do that. It's not the way I work. Um, maybe it'll work better for you if you can, in your mind's eye, visualize shadows um, in your head just straight away. But as I said, it's not something that I'm particularly good at doing. Okay. So let's uh, let's start with this. So. First thing I would do is I would create a new layer. So I'm not actually going to paint on this gray layer. That's just like the actual color of my canvas. This is the new layer I'm going to be painting on. I'm going to use this big old brush just here because I want to get into the fact that I'm, oh, God, my pictures are messing up here like crazy. Um, I want to get into this sort of feel of <coughs> laying down value in big chunks as if I was laying down bits of clay and then sculpting away at it to get the kind of uh, shape that I want. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to establish um, an horizon line. So I'm going to do it in complete black to begin with. And I'm just going to go like this. Yep, making sound effects is the way to go. So I'm just establishing a rough horizon line. So if I lay it down like this, it's easier than if I'm going uh, uh, like this.
So some kind of sloped kind of line, and then I can switch to the eraser tool, use the same brush, make this big, and just sort of cut out bits of it if I want a slightly different kind of line. This is this kind of workflow, right? Doing that, and then doing that. Just getting used to it. This is a good question, right? Um, sometimes yes, sometimes no. So for this one, I, I'm basing this off one I did yesterday to practice, and I didn't have anything in mind, all other than landscape of sorts with a kind of big structure in the back, a little bit like we did last time. But that's what I have in mind. Other times, I really do have something locked in my mind, like I am going to do like a cityscape. So I'm going to draw, I, I, you know, and I'm, I'm going to arrange my cityscape with me being on the freeway, looking down the length of the freeway, and I'll do it to that way. Other times it's more like, just chuck something down and see what kind of happens. I think you should practice both kind of ways, because you're going to, as a concept artist, you're going to have to constantly come up with new ideas. <coughs> sometimes, like, sometimes you'll be on fire, and those ideas will just come to you. Other times, it might be better to just randomly just chuck some stuff down and see if you can then pull the image from that kind of chaos. Uh, so yeah. So I'm going to say that that kind of that kind of horizon line it's feels good to me. I'm going to let my waviness of my hand and any accidental stuff that happens with the brushes, I'm going to use that. So I'm going to say, yeah, I like the fact that there was this little bit that happened here. That looks like a little hillock or something like that that's appeared. Didn't mean to put it there. That just happened because I had a big brush that had a tiny bit of texture to it, and I just made one sort of swoop, samurai-style swoop of the brush kind of going down. Um, so I did that in pure black against a white, or not a white, sort of a grayish kind of backdrop. But again, this is why um, uh, when you're using something like a Photoshop or any kind of digital paint tool, use the things in it to your advantage. So I did it in black, but it doesn't have to be in black. After the fact, because it's on its own separate layer, I can control L. Photoshop is proper playing up with the keyboard shortcuts and everything at the moment. Um, and I can change my mind and make that lighter. And depending on how light I make it, this is value, by the way. Um, depending on how light or dark or how much value there is, <laughs> it's going to create a completely different feel. So if it's super black, to get that look, you would expect, well, it had to be really backlit, wouldn't it? I'd have to begin working a sun or some light source that was maybe really low on the horizon, um, or it was super dark and oppressive, and it was overcast but getting close to night. Then you could have that super black kind of um, horizon line. It would make sense. But as I lighten it up, it can begin to feel different. It can begin to feel like it's not backlit. Now maybe it's a, a desert in a dust storm a sandstorm or something like that. And the difference was made simply by moving this slider and controlling how bright this is compared to the backdrop that it's against. And the closer you get it towards the actual value of the backdrop, the more it's faded away into mists and fog. And again, all you've done is uh, change the value. Normally, as a general rule of thumb, your sky will normally be the brightest thing in your scene, if you're doing an exterior, obviously. There are a couple of occasions where it's the other way around and the sky is a bit darker than the foreground. Uh, and that would be uh, the most obvious example I th can think of of this is a snowy kind of environment. Because the way that snow scatters light back um, means that often there's not, you can have a dark sky, but the snowy kind of hills almost glow which is a really cool effect. If you look at one of my favorite artists, um, uh, Simon Stalinhag, he's all about the Swedish kind of countryside, and so it's obviously a lot of snow kind of going on there. And he uses that, um, yeah, for artistic effect. So I'm gonna make this um, just a little bit brighter, like that, because I can always come back to that, because I did it on its own layer. <coughs> what I am gonna do is um, make sure that that isn't there. I'm gonna create a new layer, behind my horizon, and I'm gonna to switch to probably the only other brush that I might use, um, although it depends how I feel. Now I wanna do a sky, right? So I'm gonna get the, this soft kind of airbrush, 
I'll make sure I am actually on brush mode. And I'm going to figure out some kind of lighting for the sky by just dabbing in something like that, which automatically I'm beginning to quite like. And it, at the moment, that's all it is. You've literally just got a massive block of value here and then a soft bit of sky here. But as you get better at being concept artists, your, the childlike part of your imagination hopefully begins to really kick in and you begin to look at it like you'd look at um, and see castles in the sky and formations in clouds and you can begin to go, oh yeah, yeah, that's like, that's going to be like, that's going to be Mars, isn't it? My topic for CGI for, is Mars. So um, I can like, come up with my own thumbnails to figure out what would look good for the exterior and it can look like dawn or dusk on Mars or something like that. So I just start just putting in some value there, maybe go a bit darker, and darken it off just here, blend the two. It's all on its own separate layer, so I don't have to worry about going over the edge of uh, the horizon line. And I can do as little as that, you know, I can put that much in, not much more, and go, okay, well that's, I've established roughly where my light's coming <coughs> from and what the mood is, but again, maybe I'll go into the uh, levels of it, control L to bring out that levels, and I'll just play around here and see what happens, whether it looks better if it's a bit more subdued, or maybe it's a bit brighter in general. If you mess around with the gamma point, the midpoint here, you can, your darks will never, your, the darkest darks will always be the same and the lightest lights will always be the same, but you'll control where that midpoint is. So you can create specific looks like that. Um, the next thing I want to do is actually figure out what I'm going to be looking at here. So maybe I'm going to go back to that main brush, make sure I'm on brush mode, uh, make sure I've got a fairly big brush again, because I don't want to be pussyfooting around with details at this moment. I just want to be bold. So here's another thing about value. So the ground, um, as it comes towards us at least, is going to be darker than it is um, where the horizon line is. In fact, actually, let's just do that straight away now, just to get that over and done with. So I'm going to create a new layer on top of my ground. I'm going to make it a clipping layer. So if you remember from last week, whatever <coughs> I do in this layer now will only affect what's directly below it. So if I take a blue color and paint across, it's only painting on the stuff directly below it. I can now use this to maybe suggest some more atmosphere. So I'm going to go back to this airbrush, this big soft kind of airbrushy kind of thing, make it quite big, and maybe select, hold Alt and select some of the value, the darker value here. Now I can just lightly brush across it and make it look like it's getting lighter towards the horizon. And maybe I can go a bit darker suggests that it's darker towards the foreground. Lighter again. The more, and again, as I said, the more this leading edge takes on the color, or not color, I should say, value of what's behind it, the more it's going to look like it's in the distance and it's just fading off, okay? And again, I've done that on its own separate layer, so I can if I want to, change it afterwards and go, no, you know, I want it in general a bit darker. I want it more subtle. Maybe something like that. Okay, let's actually build something behind here. So back to this brush. And this time, I'm going to select this kind of value here. And I'm just going to block out some shapes. I'm not, I'm not thinking too much about these shapes and just putting some value down and then going to the eraser and chopping some stuff out. Get in to this way of thinking, this way of working. Something like that. Now, I mentioned to someone else that um, what tends to happen with uh, structures, big structures that stick up um, out of the ground and up into the sky, 
is they tend to be slightly lighter towards their base and slightly darker towards the top. So I'm going to do the same thing with this as I did with the, the ground to suggest a sort of haze into the distance. I'm going to create a new layer, make it a clipping layer, make sure I'm on brush. And I'm going to darken it. I'm going to select this value, go a bit darker. If it comes back to me, this computer's really playing up. Just darken it towards the base like this. And then lighten it towards the bottom. So it almost seems to sort of rise up, almost, um, there's almost no gap between its base and the base of the actual ground. Um, and I might go in here, I might add another layer. And this time, with a lighter value still, because I want to make another structure, but make it feel like it's significantly further away. Um, actually, one thing I could do, you could, we're in Photoshop, so again, let's use the Photoshop uh, tools. Let's just duplicate this layer. You can duplicate a layer by holding Alt and then moving the layer. And you see it turns into those two little black and white arrows. So if you move it down, you duplicated this layer to sit right underneath it. I mean, it looks the same because it's sitting in exactly the same spot. But we can move it by going Control T. Move it just here. Here's a cool contrast illusion, isn't it? It ends up looking, well, actually, no, it's not the contrast illusion I thought it was because uh, it obviously doesn't have the clipping layers. But let's shrink it down because it's further away and maybe let's also flip it so it isn't an exact copy of this mess around with the size of it because you can do all this quickly while you're thinking about the composition uh, and you haven't committed yourself you haven't spent hours and hours and hours and hours tediously painting it from nothing to a finished image straight away so I'm going to put that there and let's change the levels of it so that it appears lighter. So it appears like it's really far away now. And put another little clipping layer above it. And again, just darken it a, a smidge at the top. Like that. Um, then what else can you kind of add? Well, Let's actually add, let's think about these pathways to an image. So um, let's have a pathway that kind of leads up to this um, sort of structure just here. So I'm going to do that again on a new layer, just to give me the opportunity to change my mind if necessary. I'm going to use this, uh, the lasso selection tool to create my pathway. The reason I use this is that it's going to give me a super crisp, sharp edge, and all of the wobbly wobbliness of my freehand drawing is going to hopefully add to the sort of organic, um, realistic look of a kind of pathway. But it might take a few goes. You never know if this is going to work or not. The whole point is you're not spending too long on this, so if it does fail, then yeah, you haven't wasted too much time. So on a new layer, I'm just going to kind of sketch out a path like this, that maybe come towards here. something like that, maybe. Um, I can always chop bits out of that path by um, holding down Alt, because then it turns a little minus sign on the lasso. That means you can now cut little bits out of it. I don't like this computer at all. It keeps on making stuff disappear. And um, again, let's just fill it with some values. So uh, we can either uh, just choose a bit of value here and hold Alt and Backspace, and that will fill whatever you've got selected with whatever the value is up here. So we've got our path kind of going on on its own kind of layer. Um, it's on its. Uh, so now what we can do, we can sort of push that sense of receding into the distance. The path, let's, you know, we're going to say that the path is lighter than the ground it's surrounded on. 
So get another new layer, make it the clipping layer, and just add some sort of value information into it here by making it <coughs> a bit darker here, having it get lighter, like that. And you can say, well, there you go. That's my first little composition. I only need to spend that much time on it to just figure out what the painting's going to be. That's enough now for me to uh, think about, uh, yeah, so what are the tasks I'm now going to do to try and make that uh, look finalized? But if I'm pleased with that, <clears throat> and I, you know, I'm not locked into it completely. You know, when you do a painting, you don't have to do a thumbnail and then absolutely not deviate from it at all. In fact, th that, would be a, that would be a bad thing because you would be, um, you'd be treating it too much as a completely logical, um, unartistic kind of process. But it does make me feel that if I started painting this image now, I've always got this to go back to. I always know that this roughly kind of works. So that's just one. I'll do another. So I'm going to select all of these. And I'm going to group these as well. gone. All right. I did the wrong kind of grouping. Hold on. <coughs> That's better. Okay. So we're back to square one again. So what's the other kind of composition you can kind of do? Um, well, you can, as I mentioned, you can trawl through film stuff. Oh, there's one I did before. Um, and you can get inspired by that. And you can go, OK, I, I want to do some kind of smoky, central kind of composition type thing just here. So maybe something along those lines. I'm not going to literally do a figure coming out of a wall or a hole in the wall. But that's the kind of feel I want to get. I want to get maybe a centralized composition that feels like it's a bit smoky. So I can have that maybe on your other screen, or you can have it on the same kind of canvas. And you can tackle it in a similar kind of way. So again, I'm going to create brand new layer. I'm going to start off this time with the kind of lighting feel of it. I'm going to be a bit, I'm going to have, I'm going to have some fun. And I'm not going to use just that soft air brush. I'm going to use this cloud brush because I want it, everything to feel a bit literally um, cloudy and smoky. So again, I'm going to set a brightish kind of value and begin figuring in where my main kind of light source is going to be. This. Brighter and then significantly darker towards the edges of the screen. <coughs> and then I can start sampling directly from what I've already done to kind of smooth it out. this something like that I could and of course at any point you can go well I don't like the positioning of that light um, you can just move it up if you want to maybe stretch it out maybe make it favor more that side and then maybe I think that maybe it's just a bit too bright in the center so I'm going to just pull that down a little bit then you do a new layer, back to your big old brush, back to black, just because it stops you from um, even thinking about trying to put detail in. If it's just black, you're just dealing completely with the profiles. So I want something in the foreground that's maybe like this. So Because I'm going to go for a central kind of composition. So it's something in the foreground. Anything in the foreground, I want to sort of accentuate that. So this time it kind of slopes up towards the center. Like that. Uh, I'm going to jump. I just want to get everything blocked in first before I do any kind of, um, I'm not going to say detail, because again, I don't want to put detail into these kind of things. 
but I do want to, um, I really want to have some fun about with it, especially with things like the lighting. So um, let's go back to the brush. And let's figure out what we're going to do, what the main point of this image actually is. So maybe, maybe there's something here. And maybe it's like a platform. Like that, maybe. Maybe I want to make, I want to see the underside of this platform, so I'm going to try and roughly draw, imagine the, uh, the perspective of it, that we can see the underside of it. You don't have to get this bang on, because again, you're only going to be using this yourself to plan a picture. You're not going to necessarily be showing anyone this other than me. And uh, of course, everyone else on the course, when you put it up on your forum post, they can look at it. But, um, and then I want maybe some actual figures. But I'm not going to stress out about drawing these figures proper or anything like that. Um, they're going to be pretty, pretty simple. <laughs> because I'm not very good at doing figures. And everything looks better with threes, so I'm going to put another figure this here, sort of sitting on this thing. Now, I've done that on its own layer, but I want to make it feel like it's a little bit further back than this extreme foreground. So again, I'm just going to bring up the levels, control L, and just pull this up a little bit. So it feels like it's existing maybe in that smoky atmosphere that I initially established. I'm going to add one more thing to the background. Because I've got the light source slightly on this side, I'm going to add some indication of like the inside of a cave or something um, on the other side. I'm going to be super, super rough with this because this this could very easily make the image feel um, unbalanced. I'm doing it, you know, I'm doing it in black to begin with, but then I think, well, actually, I quite like this wedge-shaped kind of look. But let's bring up the levels, and again, I want to lift up this so it's really, really blending into that background. But it just might provide me with some visual interest of stuff happening on this side to counteract, maybe counteract the balance of the light source on this kind of side, like there. But what I do think it needs to be is a bit darker at the top, so I'm going to darken that up. Kind of like that. Um, and maybe I can do, what else can I do kind of here? Maybe I can, we can hint at a little bit of lighting on this main kind of area here. I'm going to create a new layer, make that a clipping mask, and use that lasso tool again to sort of trace out where I reckon the lighting would kind of hit. So maybe a bit like that. And to make it just a little bit more interesting, I'm going to add other little bits that might just catch a few highlights, like that. Next week, we're going to be going into um, big, medium, and small shapes and how to kind of arrange them and cluster them to make them look interesting. But let's go to, yeah, that is a brush. And let's select this value. And if you want to hide your um, selection, that's Control H. It's still there. You just can't see it. And sometimes, if you hide it and you forget you hid it, you can run into problems as you're painting. And why won't stuff show up? Because you've got a hidden selection. So I'm just going to just do that. Just lightly glaze over the top. Just to make it feel like it's a little bit bottom lit from whatever's going on around here. Um, maybe I can also suggest some top light happening as well. So I'm going to go back to this brush. But this time make it quite small. Because I'm on a uh, clipping layer, I can paint over the top of these guys and not worry about, um, so I can maybe just select, just pick out little bits of light like this, just to suggest that there's also light coming from above. 
It's like, how much, can you, how much can you suggest with the least amount actually put down? If you can get to that point, um, then you're cooking on gas and you're going to be really, really awesome at this. Um, and maybe I'm working on this also, this idea, another thing to think of, and this is, this is a mixture between composition and your control of your values, is the contrast of lights against darks, darks against lights. One of the reasons why I missed it up, had the bottom part of it lighter than the, the, the top part, is it now contrasts nicely with the extreme foreground. And you generally can do that by um, adding these kind of mist and fog passes will help separate out what we call the visual planes, which are literally just the different elements as they come towards us in the image. So I'm going to do a similar thing for the foreground by making that a little bit, just adding like this equivalent of a kind of misty, foggy kind of layer that's kind of right here. It'll be quite bold, and then I'll instantly use levels to bring that down. Just so it feels like it's got a little bit of um, dimension to it. Now, initially, what I really mean for this to be, although you could, no way could you tell, is um, like a load of people, <laughs> like an amassed amount of people. So maybe you can go in here, select a slightly lighter value, and just kind of begin suggesting heads or something like that. But again, I'm rubbish at drawing characters and figures and stuff, so I'm terrible at that. But it doesn't, it doesn't need to be particularly good. It just needs to be that you know what it's meant to be. Um, so that's another thumbnail. I had like four more planned, but um, obviously time runs away with me, and I want you to have opportunity to try this yourself. So um, what I'm going to do now is actually set you your homework that you can start in this session. And I'll hand out the pens in a moment. Uh, I'm going to keep recording this just so you can go back and listen to this uh, this evening as well. So I want you, for your homework, and your homework has a two-week deadline, so it's not due in next week, it's due in the week after. I want you to generate 12 of these super simple little thumbnails, okay? Just black and white, no colour needed. Um, but there is a theme, and the theme is I want you in your thumbnails to depict the cursed lands. And what the cursed lands are, are an area in a fantasy kind of kingdom where magic has gone chaotic and has corrupted the environment. So I want your thumbnails, just a second George, um, I want your thumbnails to depict what this environment might look like. Um, I don't want you to focus on details, I want you to focus on your composition of this environment. So don't worry about drawing like cool, amazing um, tentacled beasts being fused with rock or anything like that. Or it, not that kind of stuff. Just generate big, bold, clean thumbnail images that give me a feel for what the cursed lands might be. So like you mentioned earlier, Tom, um, a canted angle might be a good thing for that because it might feel a bit queasy and so it might give that feel. That, that's the kind of level of thought that I'd be really impressed if I saw you do. Uh, so that's a two-week deadline. Now, having said that, because you should know that um, this homework is not graded, does not go towards your eventual end-of-year mark, it can't. The university have a right hissy fit about it, if I did say that. Uh, so it's not graded. So um, you could not do it at all. Um, but I think that would be crazy if you didn't do it at all. But because it's sort of optional, I can't make you do it, that two-week deadline means that uh, in two weeks' time, I will be critiquing all of your stuff and feeding back to you about it. But you can continue to work on it during the session because the deadline isn't set in stone. It, it means that I can't say it's due in for 11 o'clock, um, two weeks' time, and then someone goes, oh, yeah, but you're letting so-and-so work on it during the session. Because it's not an official piece of graded assignment, um, you know, you can continue to work on it during the session. I know it, it's um, a bit weird to say that, but that's the way the university works. Okay, so I'll start handing out the pens now, and you can start cracking on with that straight away, and I'll ask, um, I'll answer whatever question uh, you have. I know George has got a question already. Okay, let's stop this.